Welcome to the Reverie. May you experience an unforgettable holiday. If you're anything like me, you must have been pretty confused after the ending of Panakini Act 1. Although I am still unsure about everything, in this video, I want to share with you all the conclusion and theories that I came to regarding the fate of our beloved Firefly. To better understand the fate of our little princess, we do need to do a quick recap to acquire certain information. After chatting with the crew about our next destination, we went back to our seat, as the express was about to make the jump for Panacone. We suddenly woke up in a strange place. Next to us is a strange woman who informed us we are in the border, between reality and the memory zone, a dreamscape. You can think of dreamscapes like a reality marble or a packet dimension. When a person is teleported to these dreamscape, their physical body remain wherever they were back in the real world. As seen with Stella or Kalis, you don't necessarily need any special device to access a dreamscape. Just the right amount of memoria as we were able to enter our first dreamscape from our sit in the express. The information we got from Acheron is crucial, as it tells us we will be dealing with at least three different level of realities. The real world, represented by the Reverie Hotel, the Panacone's dreamscape, and the memory zone, the border between. All right, with that out of the way, we can fast forward to where we finally meet best girl Firefly. Sorry for bothering you. Please, I need your help. After meeting Firefly, she takes us in a tour of the golden hour located in Panacone's dreamscape, got into some shenanigans with Sampo, and finally some emotional damage atop the rooftop at her secret base. This scene is extremely important to figuring out the fate of our wifey, as she says the following. Entropy loss syndrome. Have you heard of this term? It's a strange condition. Those suffering from it will experience an irreversible chronic dissociation of their physical structure. This means they will slowly fade away. And the process is barely noticeable to others. You can still run, jump, and talk as usual. Everything seems normal. But then you'll start doing everything slightly slower than others. And then even slower than that. Until the lines between your body and the entire world become blurry. You won't be able to tell reality from dreams because they have all been shattered. Based on her statement here, we can make the following assumptions. One, the real Firefly is likely encased in some kind of medical device that helps slow the toe of the entropy loss syndrome on her body. Two, the watchmaker's legacy is something capable of altering reality or even time. With that kind of power, she could extend her life or turn back time to a point in time before her home was destroyed if saving it is her real goal. After taking a adorable photo with her, we are summoned by Himeko and Welt. So we decided to call it a day in order to go meet up with them. Firefly agrees to part ways for now as she wants to go back to reality to rest. A strange thing to say if you take into consideration we are already sleeping as we are in a shared dream. But if you take her condition into consideration, it makes perfect sense. We agree to part way back at the golden hour. When we make it to the hotel lobby, Stella makes this remark. Come to think of it, I wonder if I have to go to the hotel to return to reality. And if you guys remember our first encounter with Acheron, we can all assume the answer to this question is no. Anyway, when we arrived at our destination, we run into Sparkles disguised as Sampo. She tells us Firefly can't be trusted ironically enough. Are you so enchanted by that girl? And inception us from our current dreamscape, the one everyone is supposed to be in, and sends us to an alternate version she refers to as the real dreamscape. For a small recap, we arrive at the Reverie, AKA the hotel. From there, we got into the bath and enter the dreamscape, which we thought was the dream called Panacone. From that dreamscape, we got inception by Sparkle into what she referred to as the real dreamscape or the real Panacone, and we still got the memory zone or the border between to deal with. In total, there are currently four different dimensions at play here. 
At least that's how much I've been able to keep up with. And from this final dream is where everything started to go off the rails. This dreamscape almost feels like limbo. There are disembodied voices everywhere, floating words and distorted geometries. After wandering in this dreamscape for a while, we arrived in a room with four doors, but every door we walk into leads back to that same room. In this room, we are ambushed by a creature known as the Memory Zone meme, something unto death. With the help of Black Swan, we are able to make our escape from Sparkle's dreamscape and return to reality. After a brief 10 hour long chat with the Astro Express crew, we ask Black Swan if she could confirm Firefly's safety and she says, Don't worry, that is a one way door leading to awakened reality. Unless that girl is so stubborn that she refuses to wake up from the dream, which isn't possible. She must be holed up somewhere in the hotel, massaging her eyes right now. Now that we know about her condition, we can assume she likely didn't wake up and stayed in the dream. That could explain the I am sorry line later. We decided to venture back into the memory zone, the border between reality and the Panakini dreamscape. We ran into Acheron and we find out Firefly is also in the Momory zone, which confirms the fact that she didn't leave after Black Swan saved us. She is running from something, so we hurried to her. Unfortunately, we all know what happens from this point. Don't feel too bad because this happened in the memory zone, which means our Firefly should have awakened back at the Reverie or wherever she was accessing the dreamscape from. Yep, she is 100% alive, but don't get too happy because she pretty much has an expiration date due to her entropy disorder. Although this happened in the world between, it likely affected her more than it would a normal person. My theory is, she can likely access Panacone's dreamscape remotely, which is why she is a stowaway. If we think about it, how is she a stowaway if she have an invitation? It's because the real Firefly can't make the journey to the Reverie Hotel due to her condition, but she can still somehow access it remotely using another mean. It's important to note when the creature caught her the first time she was almost ready to fight, but decided not to, as if she needed to conserve energy. Maybe using her powers would have drained her to the point where she would be forced out of the dreamscape. And no, death in the dreamscape does not mean death in real life. We know this from our experience with Acheron at the beginning, and Black Swan confirms that in her companion quest. When she was attacked, she should have been with someone she refers to as Mecha. We can assume the Mecha she was with is Stellar and Hunter Sam. There is a slight possibility the medical device I think she's in is the same frame itself which would explain why she was talking to Sam, but Black Swan couldn't pick up on another person with her. And Sam didn't start his assault in the area until after Firefly was quote, unquote killed. When we run into him, even as a Stellaron hunter, he didn't threaten us directly. Instead, he just told Black Swan and Acheron to get lost or else. You could throw that up to us being part of Elio's script or it's likely because his Firefly's companion and choose not to involve us at her request. Before we go, there is one last level of nonsense at play here, and that is the storyline is likely not being presented to us in a linear order. Do you guys remember what Welt said about Robin in the beginning? He also had Miss Robin with him. I'm no singer, but her voice sounded a little strange. Knowing what we know now, we can assume we just got Ting Yund and we never met the real Robin. The person we met was Sparkles from the very beginning. The scene we saw at the very end is likely what happened before we even arrived in Panacone. And that pretty much concludes my theory on Firefly. What do you guys think? I do think Acheron is the biggest wild card on the board right now, so maybe we'll do a video on her as well. Until then, share your thoughts in the comments below. And I, I will join their vanguard to announce this good news to you personally. Watchmaker. Thank <laughs> you.